So we all get busy in life. Things happen. Sometimes we have to put our toys away for a couple of months. Maybe we're traveling overseas or, you know, life just gets busy with kids, family, friends, and so on and so forth. So we forget about our drone for six months and we decide, well, today's a beautiful day. I want to get my drone out again and go and fly. So off, you head off to your cupboard, grab your drone, you pull it out, you try and turn the battery on, and it is absolutely dead. KBNO, killed because of non-use, as we like to call it. No, God, please, no! So what do we do in this situation? Well, in this video, we show you guys how we repair DJI batteries. Let's check it out. Wait, wait, before we get started, quick tech tip. And I know there's gonna be comments, and guys and girls asking, how does this happen? So guys, on any drone, doesn't matter what you own, but more specifically the DJI brand, batteries are going to go into discharge. They're going to discharge themselves over a period of time. So what generally ends up happening in is you go out for a weekend, you go out and fly, you fly your batteries to 20 or 30%, you get home, you're too tired, too lazy, too whatever, it doesn't really matter. And you pack your drone away and forget about it for another three months. Remember you store those batteries now at you know 20 to 30 percent maybe lower depending on how your day of flying was and what happens is over time those batteries start discharging themselves. Some batteries five days, some batteries ten days, it really depends on what you own but they start discharging themselves as I've mentioned. After a certain time they're going to hit a, a, a voltage where it's just going to shut the battery down completely. The BMS board is going to shut the battery down. And that's exactly what happens in this case. So guys, do not let your batteries run down. If you do plan on you know, storing it for a while, charge your batteries up to about the third light on the battery, which is about 60% odd, and then store the batteries. And once a month, just take them out, charge them up, and store them again. If you store them at 10, 20, 30%, you're going to destroy the batteries. And we get so many of them. And people ask, why, how does this happen? So this is exactly how it happens. Look after your batteries, guys. Keep them charged, maintain them properly. And your batteries will last a hell of a long time. We've seen batteries with well over 300 cycles and still going strong. Tech tip, remember that. Look after your batteries. Now, let's get into the video. Let's go. Guys, we're back with another video for battery repair today. So, a couple of things to mention before we even touch these guys. These are LiPo badges. Um, they're fairly safe, decent temperature resistance, etc. However, they are quite, quite dangerous to operate, especially to attempt repairs on them. So, just a disclaimer, do not try this at home. They are in fact, and you can probably YouTube this, there are in fact videos out there showing people burning down cars and houses and drones and phones and things unintentionally and accidentally of course. So again, be careful when attempting to open one of the... I will be using these guys to open them, but I have been doing this for quite a while. So again, disclaimer. Um, I cannot be responsible for any damages um, so just be vigilant be careful when working on on lipo batteries lithium same thing life before same thing so just be careful that being said what we are doing today is uh, this is a Phantom 4 battery this is a Mavic Air and a little spark so what I'll do is I'm going to be opening up each and every one of them first open up either or I'll open up the next one and then I'll open up the third one um, thereafter I'll go through the process of of testing assessing seeing how viable and good the cells are for recovery before attempting an actual repair on them uh, that's it <sighs> takes a few hours to do after which they get flight tested and then um, they get a couple of flights, a couple of cycles, charge and discharge cycles to put strain on each cell to make sure that they don't fall out of the sky. 
after they are repaired. So as mentioned, I'll go through each one. I'll then do the testing for each one. I'll then most likely balance charge each one or boost them a bit, then balance charge them, then put them through the test. And then at the end of the video, I will have reassembled them and show you that they do take a charge, or they do work, switch on the drone, etc. etc. As you can see, when these batteries are flat, they usually at least flash one light to indicate they are flat. When it flashes none, that means the battery in fact is faulty. There are a couple of potential uh, faults uh, that can only be determined usually after opening. Plugging this in, testing with a multimeter with a power supply and then some software as well. Um, as you can see, nothing, absolutely nothing. That tells me that there's no life in these batteries and you can plug these onto a charger for a year. They're not going to come back up. They normally don't come back up. All of them are 100% dead. Okay. So as mentioned, I'll go through one by one and then I will take it from there. So of course every battery is different um, in their design as you can see. This one's got an edge over here that has a couple of clips and in the front to secure it with some glue normally. The spark battery is similar. It's got an edge all on here with some clips and occasionally glue is used. Uh, very seldomly a Phantom 4 battery you will find glue. There has been cases where there's glue holding the top. There's definitely glue over here, some glue on these edges around the edge, some glue over here. Um, that's two reasons. One is to make our lives difficult and two is to make sure the battery is 100% secure. Again, um, these batteries are generally very, very, very safe. But, you know, coming if one of these units crash, for example, and this battery dislodges and it pierces a cell, that is a fire hazard. And so they'd much rather secure these with us uh, with a super glue the cases hundred um, percent to make sure that doesn't happen. Again it's it makes our lives difficult, but again it's for for the safety of the pilot and the consumer. See, there's a small little clip on either side. I just usually put a piece of clear thin plastic just to make sure it doesn't clip back in. I have to do that all around just to make my life easy and obviously to not damage. It's already cracked. This is how we receive the unit. A crack over there, crack over there, small little hairline crack over there. It's probably going to split a little bit as well as we go along opening this but it's needed obviously to attempt that repair on this uh, battery
again guys I am super super careful I've had a maybe one or two scares with regards to battery repairs previously when I started a couple of big sparks it was a bit scary uh, no fires touch wood no serious issues touch wood but again massive amounts of care to be taken I'm using a metal tweezer fortunately these are blunt I completely removed the points of of these uh, and I use this one sort of just for grabbing things um, so I'm using metal tweezers but again I'm using it with a lot of care I would highly recommend uh, anyone new to, to this that's attempting this um, do it with a lot of precaution when I say precaution I mean safety goggles, gloves and then only plastic tools absolutely nothing else We've done hundreds of batteries so far with a minimum of about a 98% success rate. Um, let's say 2% were not repairable only because the cells did not recover properly or a board went bad, one of these boards for example, uh, which houses the BMS, the battery management system, which is what we bypass on these on these on, on all of these patches get rid of the error when one of these cells go to low so that two percent i would say is to a cell that went completely bad or a bad board so far our success rate is the i think 98 percent we feel it's quite high I'm only removing this underneath so that I have more leverage on this little temperature sensor. This is what tells the BMS, again, the battery management system. It tells it, uh, the battery management system manages it, doesn't allow overcharge, discharge, has voltage protection, etc. But it also speaks to the drone and gives other data as well as temperature, voltage per cell when it's full, when it's empty, all of the good info. So now the plan is, as you can see, it's quite, this is just a little balance board over here. As you can see it's quite closed up. Lots of B7000 or whatever the glue it is that DJI uses. That's the little balance lead over there per cell, the four cell battery. So there are five leads and um, this is just for LED power on, power off. That's obviously the battery connected to charge and the plug into the drive itself. You've got your negative and your positive. So what I would do in this case is I would lift up this tape that protects all the terminals on the balance board and then go through each cell if needed. I would go through each cell with a multimeter, which I'll show in a second to see the health, the voltage, etc. on um, each cell. If one of the cells are, they don't go up um, timelessly, or the voltage drop is too high compared to the other cells, then this would not be fixable um, to a certain extent. Just do the uh, multimeter testing on this quickly. So my super old multimeter that still works without issues, it's quite old, at least 15 years old. Obviously I'm just going to put it on voltage and then do an overall all the four cells health check or voltage check. As you can see, it's quite, quite, quite low. And now what I'm going to do is, I'll check each cell individually. And then I will make up a jig 
then allows me to plug it into my power supply to give each cell a small little bit of a boost concentrated and well-timed boost low amp very low amp at the rated voltage that the cells require these are all 4.2 nominal Again, I'm working with tweezers. If I short two of these terminals, there will be a big spark and possibly fire. So, again, I'm very careful with this. And as you can see here, yeah, that's a sink. That's this specific cell as a single terminal over here, which from here, let's say negative, it goes to positive on the BMS. Or the back, at least the balance board. This positive will then go to the next cell in line that one's negative. From that negative, it goes to its positive, and the third cell is negative, and from there, and so it goes on. So, obviously, they are connected in series. I'm not too fussed about destroying the tape only because. Even with the old tape tattered and torn, I put on new tape anyway when I'm completely finished with this battery repair, if successful. So the cell is at 0.3 volts. It's extremely, extremely low. So we went 1.3. If you divide that, or call it 1.4. If you divide that by four cells, each cell is approximately 0.35. So if this cell is at 0.35, the likelihood of the other cell or being at that voltage is very high. Only because of four cells. If you do the math, it will most likely be that. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do each individual cell. I'm going to pop this on my power supply with my jig and put it on there at nominal for ch maximum charge voltage but at a very low current rating which is probably 0.5 amp or 0.2 amp just to give it a small wake up. You don't want the batteries to get a surge charge of high current in this current state. This, the cells are very quickly and again it can be dangerous so you start very 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 low and after 30 minutes maybe an hour you, you pump it up a bit to see if it'll actually take charge you disconnect it thereafter measure the voltage make a note of it and then see if it runs down if it does not run down you can then plug it into a or give it a full charge and then after we will plug it into the PC and see if we can clear the actual code which is the, the BMS which has locked out any kind of charging capability if we can clear the error then we can plug it into a phantom 4 charger and see if it charges up fully if it does we're in a good position um, and then after we just pop it into a drone temporarily put up covers pop it into a, uh, into a drone and then give it a couple of flights couple of discharges and um, charge cycles see that it drains all the cells evenly make sure everything looks good feels good temperatures are good and then the repair would be done so I'm gonna get um, move on to the next battery while I put this guy on charge um, products like probably about an hour of very low current charge and then we'll move on to the smaller batteries Hey guys, while the Phantom 4 is on charge, Phantom 4 battery is on charge, let's get to the spark. This one is a bit trickier. As mentioned, clips on the sides and a lot of the times glue. So, there are bite marks on the odd occasion that can't be helped, unfortunately.
so this one's glue just broke off, broke loose quite easily. I think this is one of the been lucky so far with this one only because that can take you 10 minutes to loosen neatly if you're not too worried about the casing then it'll take all of two minutes and as you can see that's where the clips are clip on the inside clip on the inside and this little long a piece of plastic and that piece of plastic over there is normally glued into place so the one side seems to be seems to have broken up easy but the other side has decided to give me a headache So far, so good. Obviously, with K, as there are wires on the inside, and that wires is there for the purpose of the contact of the air for the secure. Does this just make sure that the battery is in fact con uh, connected to the drum? mentioned lots of adhesive to secure in place so it can get quite hard to remove and there is an easy method to remove all of this and that would be to heat this up so you would heat it up from here I don't like doing that because first of all they are sensitive to temperature and secondly you could damage the plastics and most certainly the sticker as well I like keeping serial numbers and things like that intact okay so some more testing with the multimeter to check the voltages this one is it's a lot easier to check the voltages per cell because it goes that's a cell there's another one over there and a third one over there so it's quite easy as you can see can you see on the multimeter two volts well that's all 1.6 for the one for the middle one and 1.36 so they are quite apart um, that's a big voltage um, variant so what we want to do is we want to get each of these cells to at least approximately 3.5 volts minimum and this is a 11.4 volts um, battery so 3.5 volts each that would give you 10.5 and that would put it within operating spec being the minimum 10.5 is cut off so what we're going to do is I have another jig for this um, my Phantom 4 battery is almost at full voltage which will allow me to then plug into the PC or to the laptop uh, use some software on it and determine if it's fixable or not. Thereafter, I'll put the jig onto this one, give it some voltage, and see if the uh, if the cells are good, no swelling, if there's no voltage drop per cell, etc. That is my jig my custom little jig to allow to charge or allows me to charge all three cells simultaneously with my power supply at the correct volts and again low 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 current 
to see if these cells can be woken up again without swelling, without damage to them. So that's just my positive and my This is literally two nails um, epoxied into place, two elastic bands and an old spark battery cover. Um, as you can see, it's the same shape. I just cut out to accommodate um, me fitting it into, onto here securely. As mentioned, negative, positive. So I just put my power supplies, clamps, negative, positive, and uh, give it some voltage, low current. Let's start with that. Again, small little line area over here, all around this edge, all the way around. Around over here. Let's see if we can get this one opened as neatly as the others. So the car guys will obviously know what this is. It's a feeler gauge. I'm sure mechanics know exactly what this is. It's quite strong and super super thin. And it allows me to get into a lot of the gaps a lot easier than the other tools that I have. You think if it is just to widen the gap a little bit. goes in there. That's where the first clip, as you can see over there, is situated. I just have to work it all the way around and um, hope to not make any more bike marks and get the clips out of breaking anything else. probably the easiest um, battery that I've done so far. This guy likes uh, YouTube I guess. I've never had, <coughs> I've never been able to open one of these within five minutes as neatly as I usually like to open them. So this casing is also saved, it's neat, one or two bite marks, nothing too serious, um, but the cosmetics are sick and too healthy, functioning um, batteries, especially considering the cost of these guys. I don't think it's going to be necessary for me to pull the, pull this cover off. There's nothing on the side. I have access to the each individual, another three cell. I've got access to each individual cell over here, so I can test each individual cell as well as all of the cells together. Again, I have another jig specifically that I made for a Mavic A battery, but that'll allow me to test all three cells at the same time, which is the nominal voltage. I mean, it's fairly straightforward. It actually tells you on the back. So this one is 11.55 volts. So across three cells, that is what I'm expecting. Um, and that is the top 11.55 across the three cells. So I'm just gonna have a look and see where we are in terms of voltage. Two point eight five. Obviously, not where we need to be at all. So 
So if you pulse at three volts, it's gonna be one volt per cell, give or take. Point six, point seven, one point five. So it's not one volt per cell. This one is much higher than the other two. So I would then not necessarily discharge the cell, but I would individually charge the, that cell up to 1.5, this cell up to 1.5, and then I would put all the cells together on the power supply and collectively do a 13 volt charge. And look at the maximum charge voltage on this, 13.2. So I would do a collective 13 volt charge on all three cells to try and bring them up evenly. Again, low current. Um, after which I leave it and see if there's voltage drop, I put it in the balance charger and I make sure that um, there's no bad cells, swollen cells, etc. So I'm going to start with that process. So this is the software we use. Uh, this is to clear any errors on the battery. This is a Phantom 4 battery. You can see four cells over there and you can see each one's cell count. Cell 1, 2, 3 and 4. A cycle count. This is how many times the battery has been charged and as you can see right over there, there is one error which will be a PF in this case, a permanent failure. So guys, we haven't re revealed what software we use in this video at all. Uh, if you do want more information, please pop us an email. We'll leave the email address in the description below. So we're going to have a look at device registers quickly to see what error codes are present. And at the bottom there, operation status, you will see that it has a PF, what we call a permanent failure. This is what stops the battery from charging. So we'll need to unseal the battery now wait for it to unseal right there is confirmation pack is unsealed so we can go ahead now and clear the PF which we'll do in a second there we go clear PF that will clear that error code and just a refresh and as you can see the PF has been cleared it is now in the green so we'll just check it once or twice just to make sure that that error code is gone. And refresh again and absolutely the PF has been removed. So this will now allow the BMS board to charge the battery up normally. Seal the pack again, confirmation the pack is sealed and that's it. The next step now would be to charge the battery fully on the DJI charger and then we go over into flight tests. A few moments later. Ta -da! This is the final part where we actually test each and every battery. As you saw in the beginning of the video, we started it off with a Spark, a Mavic Air and a Phantom 4 Pro battery. And these are the actual batteries now being flown in the drones. So we fly each battery at a minimum of twice to make sure that all cells regain and are healthy before we send them back out to the clients. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for being here. Please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel. It keeps us motivated to keep on making you guys more content. Catch you guys on the next one. Thank you.